Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Photoshop. No, this is not Photoshop actually. Welcome to this YouTube tutorial. Okay, in this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to make photo books very fast in less than five minutes. You should be done if you're that kind of person that knows exactly what you're doing. Sorry. So, I know a lot of persons have the whole idea that once they want to design a photo book, they just come to, they just come here. I know some people have the idea that whenever they want to design a photo book, it is nice if they just come here, create the size of their photo book, then just go pick the pictures. Pick the pictures from their gallery and just start lining them up. So they bring the pictures in like this, resize this one and place it, then resize the next one and place it. Mind if you like the color grade I used in this picture, you can actually DM. It's out for purchase. Then they go to the next one. If they want to make this one bigger, they just make it bigger and fit it in like this. Then if it looks like it's too big, they start thinking of how to crop till, you know, they have to do it one after the other. Probably just pick the areas that they want, which is around here, then crop, you know? Then if it seems like they want to still bring back a little of this part they just cancel the chain click on the mask ctrl t then you cannot drag it around and now see the area that you want to keep and the area you don't want to keep so this is how a lot of persons design their photo book and it's very very stressful sometimes for that reason they pay people to do the designing for them so that they will not be going through the whole stress so in this video i'm going to be teaching you how to do it without going through this stress i hope this video will be able to teach you what i'm about to teach you understand so you need this app called smart album the name of the app is smart album if you want to get the app you just need to follow the link on my description box follow the instruction there and get it with some percentage off let me not just be talking let me just show you um go to my channel I really need you to see this. If not, I will be skipping Destroy this part. So I click on more. Destroy the news. Remember. Sorry. So this is it. Click on more. Come down. And um, this is it here. So you have to follow the link to get 15% off. Yes. To buy Smart Album with the code GTO1 to get 15% off. When you buy it, it's a one year subscription. So. When I when you get when you install it and you get to this first page, you want to create a new project. Let's create an album. So if you want to create an album, once you click that, you come to this page. After here, just go to customize. Customize will allow you to put whatever you want to put in. So for me, I will say 24 by 12. You understand? So I will leave everything the way it is, maybe just come to next then my border i like giving a little border white border so for that reason it will always be like this these are my settings i normally use so the next thing i want to do is start when i say start it will bring me to a place where a folder that i can save it into so maybe i'll just click here then create a new folder call it smart album Sorry, album. So after I do that, I cannot click on the folder, then save. So whatever I'm doing now will go into that folder and it will be saved as just the default name. That's because I did not save it with a particular name. So I could just go back, save as, then go into that same folder, save the project as test. So now this is the size I created. This is the the size I created for the the photo book. So I am going to, let me just um, recommend this for a photographer. Let me just say yes. And this is not supposed to be showing me. Submit, it will not take me to the website. Okay, thank you. They accepted the feedback just like that. So I am going to import picture. There are different ways to import images. You can click here. It will take you to folder where the picture is, blah, blah, blah. But I don't normally use that. 
So I'm going to be teaching you the way I would normally do it. So I'll just come here, click on all the pictures, like drag all the pictures I want to use. If this is a folder and I have all the pictures in this folder, then I will now drag them. If I'm dragging them here, I am going to be seeing it load. I'm going to be showing you two different ways to drag picture in. So it's going to load all the picture gradually into this folder. And the amazing thing is whatever picture you have used, it's going to show you that you have used this picture unless you decide to use it twice. So that's finished loading. So if I click one, two, three, four, five, six, and drag it here. Once I drag it, those pictures will be showing me gray. They are grayish now, as you can see. They are all gray. If I drag, if I drag this ones and leave one, it will show me that that particular one has not been selected. Now let's go back. Let's go back. And another way to drag it in is to drag it into this area instead of here. So once you drag it into that spot, it's going to load. It's going to load the same way to load when you keep it down here. I just hope this tutorial will not be too long because I really need to teach you how to use it so that when you're when you're ready to start using it, you just know exactly what you're doing. This is how I like dragging my images into the timeline. Now, if you can see here, it's showing me gray. Not like you cannot use it. You can still drag it and put, but it's showing me grayish because I'm using the timeline that is more closer to the photo book. So from here, if I just click, I don't have to click. I don't have to start selecting the amount I want to use because that that might just be very stressful. Around there, if I have, <clears throat> if I have, if I want the first five pictures to be the first five pictures I want to put here, all I have to do is to go in between the pictures and click it. Those pictures will just enter one slide. Look at it. Then if I go to the next place, I can just click it. So I can just be doing that. If it's just four pictures I want to add, I click it. The next one, if it is 20 pictures I want to add, if it is 20 pictures I want to add, I just click like that. As I keep clicking, that's how they will be entering the frame. So now when you're done clicking it, it will not just arrange itself. Sometimes it arranges itself, but sometimes it doesn't. I don't bother use, it, uh, use this part because I go, to, um, um, I go to Photoshop to design my cover so I can do some more serious effect. So from here, I can just be clicking here. Once you click here like this, to be showing you templates that have been designed already. Now I'll show you something that Photoshop it's a stress in Photoshop. Now, let me say I like the way this design is. I'll just click it. Once I click it, let me just go back first of all. Now, if you look, once the design is like this, you can even come this way and be running your template on just this side. So the two sides does not look the same. So let me say I like it like you can do the same to this side too. Let me say I like it like this. I could just double click. Once you double click it to show like this i don't like this extra border showing all i have to do is just select every single one of them push it to one end and drag it everything is settled now if i want to just move one of the picture it crops itself so for example this particular picture i want to make this one bigger or just drag it like this it doesn't uh, uh, distort the picture in any way so for this particular, maybe I just want this one to be small. I'll just drag it down. It will crop itself. It will not distort the picture. Then maybe I want this one to be bigger. I'll just bring this one and make it bigger. I hope you just understand what I just did now. Let me just go back and do another one for you to see. So let me start. Let me try to... For now, these other two edges are not showing because I have not run my uh, template for the both of them. So I'll just click, click 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 i like my uh, middle part being centered that's why this is like this so if you have a plan in your head how you want it to be you don't need to start looking for way to start doing side by side that side by side will work if the pictures are equal and you have done this side and you have done this side so let's click so i want one of the picture to be big so i want this one to be big i'll keep it like this now Maybe it's too close to the edge, like their head is too close to the top. I can just come here, drag it down. Once you drag it down, to drag down here, drag it down. I can even scale it from here, scale it in, then still push it like this. Anyhow, I want to keep it 
then if i feel like it's okay for me like this then i'll just keep it like that then i can select these two resize it now i'm resizing the three if you check you think like the you think the pictures are distorting but check they are not distorting they are just cropping so i'll just move this one in keep it in the same line and then now i want the three of them to fill this place so once you do that this is what you get so if you feel like one of them you want this person to be the person that is showing more you just drag her to the middle this one if you feel like is this person you drag it like that you drag it like that but if you feel like you want this one to be small you can take it back once it gets to the original size if the edges are equal the way it was where you bring in the picture it will show everybody so i just take this one resize it put it under and make it bolder make this one too bolder any of this uh edge you hold will not distort the picture then i'll just bring it in and fix it like this now you can see what i've done for this design and my border is still there if this one is too uh, close to this other picture you can go and click it and push it once you push it once you just push it like that it snaps there is a snap i don't know how the effect works but it's snap then let's go to the next one let's try again try to select a template that we like okay uh no let me go back okay i think i like this but now i like this but this particular picture i want to frame it i don't want this man to show I don't, I don't have to start cropping. I just have to push it in like this. These two people will show. Then I can now resize it to fill up the frame. I can scale it so that I will not have those other people in the frame. Then once I'm done with it, okay, I want this picture to be black and white. I don't want it to be colored. Just right click it, edit in Photoshop. This will take me to Photoshop. Then I'll just have to add the black and white adjustment. Then merge it together. Control S to save it. Once you save it like that and go back to Smart Album, it will load and turn this picture to black and white. So you just give it some time. Look at it here. It has turned to black and white. So you can just go back. The picture is already black and white. So there are a lot you can do here. So if you if you imagine the time that we use and finish this photo book, so let me just let me just undo everything because I want to show you how um, how a lot can be done in just a short time. Uh, okay, let me redo. Let me just bring in those pictures again. I want to show you how I can move through each slide in less than in less than few minutes. Then push 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 then let's take this take this take this and take this now imagine if that is how you want to design your photo book imagine how many seconds it took me to arrange to just put all of this in a book then the next thing you just go move your sliders and then make sure you put it the way you want at this point even if you want to design manually you still enjoy it more then move this side arrange it arrange it like this or like this or like this or like this if you don't like it like this you move it again you click you fill it on the frame you did it that do it to the next one also make sure it's filling the frame you can still go back even after you've done this you can still go back and run through your whatever you call it your shuffle you can shuffle through the template so you can do this over and over and if you feel like you want to still add from here you want to add picture that you have added from here you can still click it and add it it will be there if you click it like this it will replace the one that was there but if you click it and it shows this gray wall you can just add it instead of deleting or instead of just making um one to go away from that particular page you can just add it one has left so you bring it and add it so when you add it there is no one showing you here that you have not added it to a picture before but the funny thing is the way i selected it it went to the background so i can undo that and make sure it is not on the background that it is part of the images i am trying the page i'm trying to add it to 
So I'm adding it to that page. Then I can now go through the slide on that page. Go through it. Um, yes, I think this is nice. Then I'll just make sure. Some persons like their photo book like this, not fooling the frame. That's why this is their default way of arranging it. So you can just drag every single one of them to the edge and just uh, put it like this. Then you can go back and you can see the magic that you have done in less than how many minutes. Remember, I saved this picture as um, um, black and white. So it saved to the original picture inside the folder. That's why it came back like that. So if you could scroll through the this thing and we see that same picture, that same picture should be black and white. It should not be anything uh, stronger than black and white or better than black and white because the app has saved it like that. So once you're done designing your photo book and you feel like you want to save the photo book to save yourself to just go and print the work, then you come to export. Once you come to export, you have a lot of options. You can save to cloud. You can cloud proof it. There are a lot of options here. But this is the save option. This is the option that is showing you print. So you check is JPEG. If you want to change the JPEG quality, you come and change it. Here yeah, it's already showing me 100%. I don't know any other thing I want to add. There are a lot of options how to change your interface, interaction and whatever, performance. But there is no need for all of that. We just want to change image quality. So everything is looking the way I would want it to be. You can go higher. It's your choice. But recommended is what I use. So I just click OK. Then from here, if I just want to uh, save a particular a, a particular uh, slide, I have about nine spread uh, spreadsheets here. N nine spreadsheets here. So I could just click here and say I want to save. Let's cancel out first. Let's look for number. Let's look for number. Yeah, it's showing me number one, number two. Let's try to save number four alone so you can export and spreadsheet you can just save number four let's save only number four so when we export let's see what it will give to us the number four so it's loading so let's be patient and see how that saving will be this is to show you that you can just pick a particular pages and just save you might not decide to save every single page that you have designed you might just say you want to save one eight twenty like that it will save it according to the way you have asked it to save. So let's say, okay, let's go back. This is the folder. So this is it. It saved the spreadsheet the, exactly the way it was, exactly the way it was when I entered it. Understand? So this is exactly, the, you saw this space and everything. Let's go back and see. Let's go back and see how it was. This is it. This is the page. So let's go back and export again. So you can cancel this. And you can see, you can just say one, eight, no, you add comma, one, comma, eight, five, and just say export. What it's going to do now is that it's going to export those particular pages and it's going to leave the other pages. It's not going to be wasting its time to save the other pages also, but it will just stick to those pages that I have asked it to save. So it's taking its time to save. Now it's still saving page one and it's going to save it in a very large uh, format so that whatever way they want to print it you still not lose quality so at the end of the day if you lose quality in the job just know that it's because of the person that printed the job that's why you lose all those quality in your job so some of you print in a very cheap company some of us print in some companies that are very expensive most especially when the job is very very expensive so now it's done to show us the folder once you click here as you can see we have that we have this we have this also it is saved inside the folder but if you want to save everything at once you just have to enter spread all spreads once you click that if you click export now it's going to export everything i don't want to waste your time we have already spent almost 20 minutes on this video so i hope this video was helpful i hope this video have taught you everything that you need to know about using this app to create your photo book and i hope you check the description box to get the link to get your own so that you save yourself the stress of looking for somebody to help you design your photo book or waiting for somebody for one reason or the other. So once again, thank you for watching. If you love the video, do it to subscribe and I'll see you in my next video.